Hey, what's up guys? This is Mr. Heinrich and welcome in. We're looking at another progress check from AP Classroom. This is unit four, FRQ number one. We've got this dart. It's heading towards a sphere. Let's take a look. A dart is launched toward the center of a sphere that hangs from the ceiling by a string as shown in the figure. The masses of the dart and the sphere are MD and 5MD respectively. In the center of the sphere is initially a distance L below the ceiling. The dart is traveling horizontally with the speed V0 immediately before it collides and sticks to the sphere. After the collision, the dart sphere system swings up on the string until its center of mass reaches a vertical height delta y above its position at the time of the collision. The dart is initially traveling fast enough so that it can be considered to be traveling horizontally before colliding with the sphere. In part A, it wants us to draw a graph. It says sketch a graph of the total kinetic energy K sub ds of the dart sphere system as a function of time over the entire range shown on the time axis. The collision occurs at time tc and the system reaches maximum height at time t max. All right, there's the introduction. Let's look at the graph they're talking about. Okay, I want to remind you of a couple important things. As this dart comes in, all of the momentum is tied up in the dart, but the system is still considered the dart and the sphere. Now, when the dart hits the sphere and they swing up together, now the momentum has been distributed to the bigger mass, which would be the mass of the dart and the mass of the sphere. Now, momentum is definitely conserved, but what's important to realize is the kinetic energy is not conserved. With a perfectly inelastic collision, otherwise called a totally or completely inelastic collision, there is no conservation of kinetic energy. Let me prove it to you real fast on the paper. All right, so before I graph and handle A1, I want to prove to you that in a perfectly inelastic collision, momentum is conserved, but kinetic energy is not conserved. If you consider very quickly a car of mass m, it's going at velocity v, and it's about to hit another mass that is not moving, the total momentum of this system is mass times velocity plus mass times zero, that's just zero. So my total momentum is mv. On the other side of this collision, after they hit and stick, they are now a mass called 2m. And in order for momentum to be conserved, what we find out is that the velocity is half of what it used to be. And this should make sense. What's my total momentum now? Well, my total mass is 2m, and my velocity of the two-car system is v divided by 2. Twos cross out, and sure enough, my total momentum before, mv, equals my total momentum after, mv. So what does that have to do with kinetic energy? Let's take a look. If this is the only car moving beforehand, my total kinetic energy in the system is 1 half m, v squared. After, and I'm not going to say equals because they are not equal, in fact I will write not equals, would be 1 half 2m v divided by 2 squared. Now remember you have to square both the v and that divided by 2. Well these 2's cancel out and you get m v squared divided by 4. And this amount right here is less than this amount right here. So you can clearly see that we end up with less kinetic energy afterwards than we had before. Now let's carry that idea forward to our graph. When that dart initially comes in, it's got a pretty big kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy of the dart sphere system would be somewhere up here. But afterwards, it would be incorrect for us to start here and then reduce our kinetic energy down to zero at T max. We saw from this example that we had a decrease in our kinetic energy. So we should come to some other kinetic energy, maybe here, and terminate at zero kinetic energy here. Because as that sphere and dart swing up, we know they eventually come to rest, and therefore you would have a zero kinetic energy. Now you can see I drew a curve instead of a straight line. And if you wanna ask me in the comments why that is, I'd be happy to get into that with you. But it turns out this kinetic energy is proportional to T squared. And in fact, kinetic energy is reducing with the square of time. Let's move on to part A2. Derive an expression for the speed Vc of the dart sphere system immediately after the dart collides with the sphere. Express your answer in terms of Md, L, V0, and physical constants as appropriate. All right, so here we are at A2. We've got everything set up. We've got our given information. We're trying to find the velocity C, which is the velocity of these two once they've combined the dart sticks, and the mass and the darts swing up together. All right, so we're looking at the conservation of momentum. 
just like I showed you the example of those two cars earlier, we're looking at the same exact idea. We're saying that the sum of the momentum before the collision has to equal the sum of the momentum after the collision. Before the collision, there is no momentum in the sphere. All the momentum is simply in the dart. So I could say mass times velocity equals. Now, after the collision, both of these items stick together. So they have a collective mass of MD plus 5 MD. And they go off together with a velocity VC. So now let's add up these two masses. And I would get MD plus 5 MD, which is 6 MD times VC. And that equals MD times V naught. Look at this. Our MDs cancel out. We'll divide both sides by 6. 6's six cancel out. And we get VC equals V naught divided by 6. All done. Looking at this answer, it's important to realize that a lot of times AP gives you all these ideas you can express your answer in, but oftentimes they give you too many quantities and they're trying to kind of throw you off. So don't be thrown off. The only quantity we needed to express our answer in was V naught. All right, moving on to A3. Derive an expression for the maximum vertical height delta y of the dart sphere system above its position at the time of the collision. Express your answer in terms of MD, L, V naught, and physical constants as appropriate. So here's our setup for A3. We've got our sphere and dart together moving at V naught divided by 6. The system is going to swing up to a height delta y. We're looking for that height in terms of these things. There we go. What kind of physics are we going to use? Well, we've got initially no height and we've got some velocity. So doesn't that point to kinetic energy at this location? Yes. And we're going to swing up, up, up until we have no velocity at this point, but we do have a height in a gravitational field. That means this kinetic energy is converting to potential energy. And that's our setup when we're looking at mechanical energy for this simple pendulum system. So initially we have one half mv squared, but remember our initial mass is 6m and our initial velocity is v naught divided by 6. So we'd have one half 6md v naught divided by 6 squared equals 6mdg and the h that we're talking about is delta y. So I'll put delta y. Remember potential energy is just mgh. So what happens next? Our 6MDs cancel out on both sides of the equation. I'm going to square this expression and leave this divided by 2 next to this 6 squared, which is 36. So I'd have V naught squared over 2 times 6 squared is 36 equals G delta Y. I would divide both sides by G, and I've got my final expression. I'll write it this direction. I'll have delta Y equals V naught squared divide the g over, times 72. And you could flip that around and write 72g. That would probably look cleaner, but I'm going to leave it just like that. And that's it for part A3. Let's move on. Now, this last part is pretty verbose. It's actually, I think, the most challenging part of this FRQ. So if we look at part B, it's asking, indicate which of the three darts result in the greatest maximum height for the sphere. Justify your answer. So we need to understand the three scenarios that we're dealing with. So looking at the scenarios, three more darts are launched, one at a time at the sphere. Each dart has the same mass, MD, and collides with the sphere with the same horizontal velocity, V0, to the right with the sphere initially hanging at rest on the string. The darts are made of different materials. However, each behaves differently when it collides with the sphere as follows. So the sticking dart does exactly what it sounds like. It sticks to the sphere and remains stuck in the sphere. After the collision, the dart sphere system swing to a maximum height delta y stick. The bouncing dart. This dart bounces off the sphere then moves backward to the left after the collision. The sphere swings to a maximum height delta y bounce through dart. This dart passes all the way through the sphere and continues traveling away to the right so it would go through and keep passing through. After the collision, the sphere swings to a maximum height, delta y through. So out of all of those, part B is saying which one swings to the highest height, and we need to justify our answer. So do you understand well at this point that whatever initial momentum we have in the system, we have to have the same momentum after the collision? 
That's the idea of the conservation of momentum. If you understand that, then this could be your answer. You would say the bounce dart results in the highest height for the sphere, period. As the bounce dart comes in, the only momentum in the system is MdV0. When it bounces, it has some negative momentum. Since this is the only collision where a negative momentum results after the collision, the sphere must compensate by having a high enough positive momentum so that it can counteract that negative momentum, thus retaining the same initial positive momentum of the dart by itself. Since the sphere will have the highest momentum in this case, it will have the highest velocity and therefore obtain the highest height period. So that was the conceptual explanation, and there's a lot to it. It's pretty dense. Feel free to write that down if that made sense to you. I'm going to move on to showing you a math approach, which I think is a much more ironclad, foolproof way to approach this problem. But if you like that one, you can be done with the video, but if not, keep hanging out with me. Let's take a look. So if we're using a math approach in part B, I would still start off with this statement. The dart with the biggest velocity will achieve the highest height. So let's look first at the stick dart. We already know the answer to that. We know that after the collision, our velocity is V0 divided by 6. Now I'm not going to call this velocity Vc anymore. I'm going to call it Vs prime, meaning the velocity of the sphere after the collision. So stick dart is done. We're going to compare the other two velocities to that velocity. Let's move on to the through dart. This would be Vs prime equals, we're going to find out, okay? So in order to find this Vs prime for the dart after it passes through, I need to assume something. After the dart passes through, I'm going to say it loses half its velocity. That's a pretty reasonable idea. So I'm going to set up my conservation of momentum, and I will say the only momentum in the system beforehand is the mass of the dart times its initial velocity. After it passes through the sphere, it has momentum Md times V0 divided by 2. That leaves us with a sphere, 5MD, that will have some velocity that we're looking for, and again, we're calling that Vs prime, all right? So the first thing we get to do is cross out our MDs. So I'm gonna multiply everything by two now, and I get 2V0 equals V0 plus 10 Vs prime. And looking at that, I would subtract this over, and then I would divide by 10, right? So I'd have 2V0 minus V0, which is V0, divided by 10, and I would end up getting Vs prime equals V0 divided by 10. Look at that. So we have a bigger velocity from the stick velocity than we do from the pass-through velocity. Important to realize. Let's move on to the one that we already know goes the highest, which is the bounce. Again, we're looking for Vs prime here, and we're going to make an assumption. We're going to assume that as the dart bounces off the sphere, it has a negative V0 divided by 2. So as it bounces left, it does lose some velocity, and that is a safe assumption, all right? So I'm going to say then my only momentum in the system beforehand is still MD V0 equals the dart bounces backwards, so we would say that momentum is MD negative V0 divided by 2 plus 5 MD Vs prime. So solving for Vs prime, I'm going to multiply everything by 2, and I'm going to cross out all my MDs because MD is in every term. So I would get 2V0 equals negative V0 plus 10 Vs prime. All right, let's do a little math in our heads here. I'm going to add this to the other side. I'm going to get 3V0 divided by the 10, and that will be my Vs. Boom. And that is the biggest velocity. If you're not sure why that's the biggest one, that's okay. Let me do a quick little decimal analysis for you. This would be 0.167 V0. This would be 0.1 V0. And this one would be 0.33 V0. So clearly this is the biggest velocity. The last statement you would make would be since bounce start resulted in biggest velocity or sphere, the sphere would swing highest in this case. All right, that's another one done. I hope it helped you out. Mr. Heinrich, I'm out of here. If you got questions or comments, let me know. Like, subscribe. I'll talk to you soon.